It was William Shakespeare who wrote, do not swear by the moon, for she changes constantly. With the push towards completing the stand system in 2020 so artists can then move on to Pyro, the PU Environment Art team is facing one of the most daunting tasks to date, to go from concept all the way to completion on Microtech's three moons in only a single quarter, and all while using nascent technology and developing an advanced pipeline along the way. On today's show, we check in with Ian and Michelle for the beginning of their team's journeys. Check it out. When I joined CIG like three years ago, actually it's the 15th, uh, it's exactly three years ago. We just had our first planets procedurally generated, like Marco and Pascal uh, were working on it, and the, there was this planet service, and everybody was super excited about that first step on the moon, basically. Looking at how fast we've been able to uh, do moons back then versus how fast we can do it now, um, we've made such big steps. So we want to see what possibilities we can do um, within our first quarter of this year. As we showed at CitizenCon uh, end of last year, we, we showed that first sneak peek at what Pyro could be. So as myself and as a team, we're all quite excited about starting that process. But before then, we want to close out these last three moons in Stanton. So that time is a factor because I'm getting um, pushed by my boss, Chris, to start on this new system. I think the biggest challenges for these moons, which is also uh, an exciting one, is that out of the three, two of them rely heavily on our ocean and frozen ocean, which of all the planetary bodies we've done so far, we've only used the ocean ones on Hurston and the frozen ocean ones on Microtech. So this process starts by first getting the briefing from law. So a lot of the Stanton system was mapped out so we check that reference and that gives us our starting point for what these moons are going to be about. Uh, this could be anything from key distinguishing landmarks to any get kind of core gameplay requirements going in. And this is important because within an entire star system, we want the palette to be consistent. We don't want to be going from one moon or one planet to the next, kind of reinventing ourselves. We knew that we had uh, a lot of pre-established geology packs and, and biomes, and I kind of wanted to utilize V4 as almost like our first exploration ground for taking the concept direction that we've already established and give the team a little bit of creative freedom to see what they can do. So we didn't go too detailed with the concept, so it was a little bit of a blank canvas there. One of the key initiatives with V4 tech is kind of empowering the artists to get quicker at doing the job so they can focus on the quality and the quantity aspects. Uh, they don't necessarily to, need to worry about too much. So what we did do is I did some uh, mood boards. And what this, is, what this does is it makes sure, again, we're keeping within a certain palette. So the, these mood boards just reference, um, you know, existing biomes or, um, geology formations that we'd want to recreate. You know, Chris is a very visual guy, so he likes to see it before any real production started, just to see if he's happy with the direction. Once Chris is happy, and then we, we can kind of take it through to the next stage. We're doing three moons in one quarter. I have a pretty good feeling about the success rate for it. We've thrown an additional a challenge in the mix with making it very reliant on the ocean technology, and that will probably cause some additional struggle, but I feel quite confident that we can do it. Now from the tasks ahead to those just about to be completed, the Cutlass Red is making its long-awaited flight-ready debut in Alpha 381 and bringing with it not just a really stylish red paint job, but also new mechanics that aim to change the way we treat life and death in the persistent universe. So for that reason, we decided to take John, Michael, and Josh and stick them in a call together to discuss its development and see what happened. Take a look. So we're going to talk about the Cutlass Red today. Uh, we've got Michael the designer, Josh the artist. Straight off the bat, what does the Cutlass Red mean to you? Kind of Drake's introduction into medical gameplay and um, just this very fun, exciting ship where players can kind of fly around, keep groups together, 
uh, rescue other players. It's, it's it's my it's my child and Star Citizen. Uh, the Black was the first ship I did from the beginning. So uh, getting to finish the Red, I've been waiting a long time for this, and the Red is uh, bringing a whole new element to Star Citizen. It's the first rung on the ladder of the medical gameplay career, so it adds a whole new set of gameplay options that no other ship in the game currently does. So we wanted for the Cutlass Red instead of the open slide, like assault doors is what I like to call them, on the Cutlass Black. For this one we needed more of like a protected environment. As the main cabin area is now a medical treatment facility, we have to secure the patients and the workers inside, the people who are being treated in, in danger. Yeah, I think the, the other thing that people always ask a lot is, when can I get my flashy lights on a ship? That was something I was very adamant about at the very start of this process, is that it had to have the kind of EMS light feel. The Cutlass Red brings two new features into the Star Citizen universe. Uh, so let's talk about the first one, healing. Healing yourself, if you're injured, you can just go inside the Cutlass, lay down on this bed, there will be a little prompt for you to heal. We have this really cool little scanner that goes through with a nice little like, toned lighting effect, kind of show that you're being healed. And then the second is respawning, which you sort of <coughs> access in a very similar way. You, you lie down on the bed, you set the, the medical beds to be your respawn point. Yeah. And then at that point, if you die and the ship is still in relative vicinity, right. uh, you can respawn back to the ship, which is a, a big feature. Okay, so we're just about out of time. Uh, final thoughts on the Cutlass Red. Uh, the thing I'm looking forward to is heal players, kind of get them going a little bit better than we can right now. I can't wait for <laughs> players flying around with their, uh, with their lights and shining their searchlights in people's faces. I think for me it's just the, the extension of group play. Because yeah. when yeah. you play as a group at the moment, as soon as one of you makes a mistake and dies, they're essentially out of the group for a, a long period of time right. whilst they get back. And this fills that gap in and it just allows those groups to play on for right. longer. So what did we learn this week? We learned that the pressure is on to complete Microtech's three moons in a single quarter. That the Environment R team has the people, the process, and the plan in place to get it done. And that while Drake may not care for ejection seats, they're still going to be the first out the door with ship healing and responding mechanics with the Cutlass Red. Yes, just when you think you have all the answers, Drake goes and changes the question. Roddy Piper. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next week. Roddy's favorite company would definitely be Drake.